Hi everyone, I would like to share with you today my ongoing improvements on my CNC mill. Um, if you don't know me yet, um, I use CNC and other manufacturing techniques as a tool. I'm kind of a manufacturing nerd, but I have a purpose, which is I'm building my own ultralight aircraft. So I've had this mill for uh, about three years now. This is my second machine. I've had the CX3 before that I had converted to CNC, and I've done the same with this machine. But it has some shortcomings that I have not been happy lately with, and I'm trying to address those points one by one. So first, let me show you what the machine is like. Here's the machine. There's a couple of things you need to understand about this machine. First, um, it's a convertible mill and leg. It's a combo. So I can tilt the spindle 90 degrees or whatever angle in between to use um, as a drill, as a bore, or, or as a lathe. Uh, and you can see it's actually got the typical um, lathe cross light. It doesn't look like a mill table, it looks more like a lathe table. And that's one of the shortcomings we're going to talk about uh, soon. Um, another important statement is that this is not a production machine. And that's very important. Um, this machine was meant for educational purposes. It's a French brand. It's called Holland. That would be Holland in, uh, in English. And um, it was not meant to, to last very long in a production environment and to do countless machining hours. So in the way it is built, it, it's well built overall, it doesn't lack stiffness or whatever, but it doesn't have the adequate provisions uh, to compensate for wear. And that's also something very important. So let, let's look at the details. Now you can see this is um, the, the label. This machine was built in 83. Um, it has it has seen quite a bit of use. Um, you can you can totally tell on, on some some of the, the 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 table on some of the slides that it has much more backlash or play um, than than somewhere else. Like typically this part that is more used than than the the, the tip of uh, of the x-axis, it's it's def here it's definitely worn out. So it. It has um, a boxway construction, which is quite unusual. Here you can see the y-axis. Um, so it's all bolted. Um, the the frame is obviously cast iron, but all all those uh, boxways are completely bolted together. This is bolted to this. Same here. Um, so that's a good thing because it's, because it's completely modular and it's easier to modify that way. The GoPro setup, um, but as I told you, uh, one issue is you don't have a provision to compensate for wear. Um, that means uh, typically you can uh, adjust um, the lateral play on the axis um, by using um, those two set screws. This will slide the, the entire uh, shoe of the x-axis here. And then you only have this ridiculous set screw with a with a brass plug um, um, pressing against the slide, um, but you cannot compensate for uh, for wear in that direction, and this is really bad. Um, another problem I, I'm having lately is because of um, the the y axis and the way I have done the conversion. Um, originally. Um, the, the brass nuts were very very small and typically on the y-axis the brass nut would fit right there. Uh, now obviously uh, ball nuts are much much larger and I have to offset even more um, the ball screw from, from the center of the, of the slide and, and that's a really large offset and, and that means I'm having a lot of uh, stick and slip on, on that axis and that's not good. Uh, then the, the y-axis itself is kind of weak, um, it, it's quite tall and it doesn't have, uh, it's not beefy, it's not beefy and you can tell when you stack up um, work holding on the table 
that the higher you get, uh, the more vibrations you have. That's kind of obvious, but it, it's really... You, you can totally tell on that machine that it's a big problem. Um, so, that probably means that one of the next thing I'm going to do is upgrade to um, linearize. I would have loved uh, to just um, remove uh, the box wise, have them ground to size again, that would make up for the wear, sure, and, and that would work like long enough uh, for what I have to do with that machine. But it will not change uh, the construction issues with the, the, the Y axis. And you can actually say it's the, the same basic problem for, for the Z axis. Uh, you can see that the ball screw is here. And, and again, that's a lot of step and slick. And even though I have the gas strut on the other side to, uh, to help bear the weight of, of, the, of the head, um, you can tell when you, when you reverse the direction of travel on the z-axis that the, um, the tool is actually moving sideways just a little. Um, on, on the x-axis it's a bit different because uh, the box way is actually split so I could fit um, the ball screw right in the middle. So the x-axis is actually good. It, it's just it's worn out. Um, I could grind this but for the ZNY, that's a big problem to me. Now, um, for now, my biggest issue with this machine and what we're going to deal with today is the spindle power. Um, this electric motor is like 375 watts, um, so that's kind of uh, half a horsepower. And um, it's a three-phase motor, but running on um, on a capacitor, so it, it has actually less power than it should have. And because of, of the bearings preload on the spindle and, and that, like I cannot exceed 1000 RPM, and even then I often have um, stalling issues. So that's not a reliable CNC operation here. So... The first thing I want to do on, on this uh, on this uh, machine is to change the spindle motor. Um, so you, you can see it has it has a gearbox here, um, so you can switch uh, between direct drive and like um, one to three drive ratio, and then you have a three stage um, belt drive here. So. Typically, I will only use 1000 RPM and 250 when I really need to get slow. So what I want to do is change this motor for something uh, quite bigger and remove this gearbox because it makes a hell of a noise. And, and I am through with this. So, um, well, I'm kind of uh, halfway at the conversion right now. So what I can show you is um, the hardware that I have found. This is uh, a Siemens VFD, so I'm planning to completely remove the gearbox and use that VFD to drive the spindle um, to like 600 to 6000 RPM. And this is uh, the electric motor with, um, with the two uh, flanges that I have just machined. And the purpose of changing these flanges to replace for the original cast iron flanges is to remove a lot of weights because as you can tell that, that the axis uh, already have um, difficulties dealing with the weight of, of that entire head so I don't want it to be too heavy not in any case not heavier than it is already now so I'm replacing actually this entire assembly here uh, I'm removing that cast iron plate the gearbox and the motor obviously for for uh, something that should not be much uh, bulkier nor heavier so the gearbox goes away completely because the VFD takes care of that but that plate is actually going to be replaced by that drive plate which this part here is actually going to bolt directly to the spindle and the good thing is that entire assembly this is a 3 kilowatts motor so that's like 10 times <laughs> the, the, the original power. This entire assembly weighs very close to what the original assembly weighs. 
So I'm really happy with that right now. So now that you know, uh, I'm going to show you how I have machined this and, and what I've been through, through to, to make it happen. Fast forward two weeks, I'm done with the conversion and let me show you how I did this. So this is the largest plate that I've machined and the other one is behind that coal that's just aluminum with the 3D printed uh, shroud to adapt the fan. So this way the fan blows air um, at the same airflow whatever the motor speed is so helps with the with the better cooling at low speeds um, it all fits pretty well together I didn't have any major problem during the assembly um, I had to improvise uh, this belt tensioner because I hadn't included one in the drawing so it's still temporary um, it's doing its job but the bearing here will won't be last lead, a long lead um, so I kept the this stock pulley and, and bought this um, cast iron tape lock pulley the, those two don't really uh, match well together because some kind of spacer is needed but I still have um, a good ratio here it's, uh, it makes a 2 to 3 uh, speed ratio 
And uh, then everything is wired to the VFD which is sitting here um, on the side of the electrical box and I managed to put all the wires um, through that uh, cable carrier so everything is quite neat. Uh, it took some time to wire um, let's say that the, the usual manual for, uh, for the VFD is quite long um, but I got it uh, working uh, finally so here is how it works uh, everything goes through Mac 3 Now I'm going to start with the slowest speed possible which is 400 RPM so here uh, the motor is running at, at 10 Hz um, it's, it's, a it's a 50 Hz motor but uh, the, I set the slowest speed to 10 Hz and the maximum speed to 100 Hz so that's a 10 to 1 ratio and here I can display um, the percentage of maximum power of the motor so here it's only taking 2% of the power to, to drive at that speed and I can also use it to display the frequency 11 Hz so And now I can increase the speed as I wish. So say 2000 RPM. So in IMD that's S2000. It's going to speed up. Oops, 200. And one thing I can notice, uh, you can't because I didn't show you previously what the sound was like, but it is so quiet now. It's closed down quite fast. You can see at the end that it ejects some direct um, direct current to, to stop the motor. So it doesn't have any braking resistor, but still it, it, um, it slows down pretty fast. And obviously I can reverse it um, with M4 but not so much for now because the idler is kind of weak and in reverse uh, while well the belt tension is going to go through the idler so I'm going to I'm going to modify that quite a bit I'm probably going to go for um, homemade poly V pulleys with two different ratios one for uh, for for the lathe mod which is going to be around max 3000 rpm just like here and, uh, and a bit faster uh, ratio to go up to six, let's say 6000 for milling with, for use with the small end mill so, so this is it um, well it took me some time to complete overall I would say about one month but I, I'm really happy I did it because it's going to speed up things um, when I have a lot more aluminum to mill so if you have any questions please ask, uh, I'm open for comments Bye, see you.